we, I was born in Lafayette uh, and raised in Lafayette. My parents were born in, in Carincro and raised in Carincro. I went to uh, St. Paul School uh, as, a, as a child, St. Paul Elementary School, and uh, uh, for eight years. And uh, after that, I went to uh, Holy Rosary High School here in Lafayette for two years. And then uh, after that, I went to um, Paul Brew High School here in Lafayette for my final two years of school. Uh, after school, I get home and I had to cook for my siblings. And back then, <laughs> we get the home at, at uh, uh, I don't know if you for me with what we call kush kush, but I I cook kush kush in the afternoon, <laughs> so. And, that was that was almost a routine for us with milk. I didn't know what a lawyer was, quite frankly, in elementary school. I mean, we we never had need for a lawyer. My, my parents never discussed occupation, a lawyer's occupation, um, and so. But however, they they had a friend who uh, of the family who was a lawyer, Charles Finley and uh, whom they uh, came to know. And, um, and I talked to him one day. In fact, he came to the school on uh, career day, I think it was. And, uh, and he talked to, to, to us as students. And, uh, and at that point, I decided, well, maybe I might try law, you know, after graduating, and, uh, which is what I did. And, um, uh, and so I, I went to, um, uh, Southern Law School, which is where he went and graduated from uh, uh, after graduating from college. Uh, a business law instructor for almost two years. So that was a good start for me because that was steady income. Um, and once that was done, uh, uh, I, I sought to engage in private practice. I, what I did was I, I built a, a uh, an office next to my house, um, and uh, with it was two room, uh, a reception in my office, and bathroom. It wasn't, wasn't wasn't big at all, wasn't large at all, quite frankly. And and, and, and in the practice, we we did everything. I did everything. I did uh, 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 from bankruptcy to uh, uh, domestic matters to. Uh, criminal matters, uh, uh, real estate closing. I did. I had. Uh, I was lucky enough to have title insurance back then, uh, to where I could do the FHA closing and, and the small business loan closing, and um, and so we did a bunch of those. My wife uh, is Bernadette Rubin, Bernadette Fontenot Rubin. She's from Washington, Louisiana. Um, Byrne uh, was an educator. She, she taught for 20-something years. And um, after retiring, she went into the daycare business, I think for 17 years, I believe. Um, and we had, uh, we, we had three children, uh, LaShawn, Chanda, and, and Edward. Um, LaShawn is a teacher. Uh, Chanda is a... Uh, was a professional tennis player who now does uh, TV commentating for the tennis channel. And then, of course, Ed, who was a lawyer, uh, uh, died about two and a half years ago from an overactive thyroid uh, uh, disease. If it wasn't for affirmative actions, I wouldn't be here. I mean, uh, th I mean, th 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 there was no question I wouldn't be here. We, it, it, it essentially, it uh, uh, necessitated the participation or inclusion of minority minority judges, uh, and and um, uh, so it, it was quite impactful. It, uh, it it really 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 was, and um, because I don't think otherwise, uh, but for that I would I would not have been the judge. I decided to run for judge. Uh, because I was encouraged by um, judges who were already on the bench here in Lafayette. Uh, uh, in fact, I had one judge 
uh, uh, he said, listen, the, day, the last day to qualify, I had not qualified. And uh, cause I, I was ambivalent about it. I didn't know whether or not I really wanted to do this. And, uh, and this one judge called me and said, you haven't qualified. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to pay you the qualifying fee. And I said, that's not necessary. So anyway, I, I decided, because he was a friend of mine, and I decided to come over and qualify. The, the legislature um, uh, created the uh, minority seats in, uh, uh, it must be 1991, I think. Um, yeah, and that was pursuant to Clark versus Edwards. Uh, uh, Janice Clark, who is now a judge in, in Baton Rouge, uh, sued the, the state of Louisiana and the governor and, uh, and, and got a favorable ruling. Oh, actually, it, it was a, uh, uh, a suit that was settled, creating these suits, these seats. I was elected in 1993, um, and, uh, and there were five opponents that I had in, in that election and um, and the uh, geography uh, of the district was from Lafayette to Rain to Crowley okay um, and uh, I had um, I had a lot of people helping me my, my, my family obviously and we walked the entire district and um, and, 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 and solicited the help from people. There were some who knew of me or knew of my reputation as a lawyer, and so I got a lot of support. Um, and that's what helped me get elected. There was a case where we had the uh, 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 flood insurance. Uh, the insurance company was denying uh, flood coverage for water coming up under the house, and we ruled that they were entitled to coverage. And that made well, world, world, worldwide news, quite frankly, and because uh, we got calls from all over the place on that thing. I guess that experience of being on Playboy magazine. And um, uh, I had a case where the city of Lafayette uh, was trying to shut down all the um, strip joints, the strip, strip bar. And um, and so that case ended up before me, and uh, and it was a jury trial, and uh, and so we had the trial. We had the, the defendants, the girls who were allegedly um, uh, in the nude, had a, a pasty on uh, on uh, on their uh, on their breasts, and so we went, we had the trial and I allowed them to expose us to the jury. But it was, it was done with, with dignity. Now, of course, you know, the, the lights were out and I had them in a corner and only the jury could see it, okay? And so, um, and what I did was I announced that I wasn't looking at the evidence because I'm not, I'm not the judge of the evidence, the jury is. I went and I looked outside the window, okay? And I announced that, and um, and, and again, you know, the, so I made the cover of Playboy. Uh, all the talk show hosts from Dallas to New Orleans criticized me. They called me <laughs> a, a, a wuss at the time. I don't know if that's appropriate, but but they did. I mean, they were just poking fun. So to, to make a long story short. Um, it was in the paper the following day, and uh, my wife got up and she was reading the paper in the bed, and so she said, well, why did these girls have to do that? I said, well, you know, they, the, the jury looked at the evidence, I, I, you know. And she continued to read, and she noticed that I had not, I, I, went, I indicated that I went look out the window, so she says, Oh, you didn't look at him? I said, no, I did not. I went look at him. Oh, okay, all right. Then she was somewhat pleased. So we made a ruling on it, 
um, which was upheld, uh, actually the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in our favor on that as well. Now there was a federal judge in New Orleans who had ruled the, the opposite way, uh, denying the uh, same-sex marriage, and, 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 and our ruling was simply confirmed by the U.S. Supreme Court. I was the first member of Acadiana Legal Services, and, uh, and then we hired uh, the, the first director, Joe Okers. In fact, I got a plaque, I think, a few years ago, um, thanking me for my services to Acadiana Legal Services. When I first started practicing, one of the first lawyers that I met uh, was a, a lawyer by the name of uh, Joe Onabane with the Onabane Law Firm. And I'm talking about 40 something years ago. Um, uh, uh, a good lawyer. And his advice to me was that whatever you do, make sure you return all of your calls that you get back with your clients. Always call them back. And that stood with me, and so, and I made sure that every time I got a call from somebody, I called them back, and and, and that was because of, the, of of that notion, and that helped me in my practice. Then I had another one lawyer by the name of Pete Rush, who was a, a workaholic, and this guy really worked. I mean, you can call him at nine o'clock at night if you had a problem. He was at his house in his office doing some work, and. Um, and, and that helped me with my work ethics. And, and, and that's why, why I got to do the things that I did. And uh, 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 it, 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 it proved to be the right thing to do. I, I presided over drug court for uh, a period of, of three years. Um, when, when I went to the to, to drug court, it, um, the, the participants, were um, were not organized, and 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 I mean they had no um, uh, uh, dress code or anything. Uh, I mean it was it was it was in disarray. So what I did was immediately when I got there, I uh, instituted a dress code. Everybody had to have a suit and tie, and um, and, 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 the, and the ladies had to be well dressed and I made sure they got those because we went to Goodwill and other places to get clothes for them. And, um, and um, uh, along with, they were required to have a stress card that uh, anytime they felt like they were about to fall off the wagon or if they were uh, feeling stressed, they had a card with their, with their consular as a number uh, or caseworker number on that card and they were required to uh, call their caseworker and they were also mandated to uh, uh, maintain that card at all times. If, if they were, uh, 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 asked for a card and they were without it, on, on, uh, they, would, they would get sanctioned. And that sanctioned mean that they could get a one or two days in jail. And, um, and so we instilled some pride in them and um, uh, it, 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 uh, it, they had lost their acclimation to, um, to living clean or living a good and healthy life. We tried to reinstill that in them and, uh, and break that cycle of, 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 of using drugs. And uh, even today, I, I, when I go to certain places, I run across kids who come to me and say, hey, listen, you saved my life, you know, I mean, and, um, or you, you know, you really, really helped me. And that's a good feeling, that, that's rewarding. I mean, you know, when, when you see that. Um, I've given this job every bit of what I had to offer. The best that I had to offer, uh, I, I, I've given it. I mean, you know, barring nothing. And then, so if I'm lucky enough to retire, I think I'm just going to take it easy, sit back, and, and, and relax, and and uh, just not do much at all. I'd like to be remembered uh, as a judge who gave it his all, 
who 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 um who's not afraid to deal with the issues, um, uh, not afraid to deal with the consequences, um, and all always try to do what was right.